Good day, Math Amazing Learners! Welcome to Valenzuela Live for Mathematics 6. I am Mrs. Mara Fessi Bilanghel from Apollonia Efrafel Elementary School, your Math Abbey Live teacher for today. Before we proceed, please do the following for a smooth flow of our discussion. Please be reminded to type in your complete name, grade and section, and name of your school so that your teacher can easily recognize your attendance. During our discussion, please participate actively by typing in your answers or questions in our comment box below. Remember that to comment only things which are related to our subject and not those comments which will distract others. So, are you ready? Kindly get your pen, paper, and self-learning module and let us explore and conquer the world of mathematics. For our quarter to week one lesson, you must perform and master the following skills. First, you must express one value as a fraction given the ratio and vice versa. Next, you have to define and illustrate the meaning of ratio and proportion using concrete or pictorial models. Today, we are going to learn about ratio and proportion. But before we discuss ratio and proportion, let us see how good you are in finding matches. In this activity entitled Find My Match, we just have to determine which fraction at the right is equivalent to the given fraction. You are only given 5 seconds to answer each number. Are you ready? Let's have our first fraction, which is 2 thirds. Find its match, and your timer starts now. Time's up. Let us see the answer. If your answer is 4 6, well done. You got it right. Now, let's have our second fraction. We have 3 twelfths. Find its match and your 5 seconds starts now. Time's up. Let's see if you get the correct answer. 3 twelfths is equal to 1 fourth. Did you get the same answer? Good job. Now, let us have our third fraction. Our third fraction is 4 fifths. Find its match and your timer starts now. Time's up. Who among you answer 8 over 10? So if your answer is 8 over 10, great job. You are right. Let us have our next fraction. Our next fraction is one third. Find its match and your timer starts now. So one third is equal to three nine. Do you have the same answer? If yes, well done. And for our last fraction, we have two fourths. Find its match and your timer starts now. And the answer for our last question is three six. Two fourths is equal to three six. Do you get the same answer? Great job, learners. I want to ask you, do you love fruit juices? Me, I love fruit juices. And my favorite is pineapple juice. Aside from its good taste, it is also good for our health. Did you know that to produce a liter of pineapple juice, we need 3 kilograms of pineapple? Yes, to have a liter of fresh pineapple juice, we need 3 kilograms of pineapple. 
and the relationship of 1 liter of pineapple juice to 3 kilograms of pineapple is what we call ratio. Ratio is the relationship or comparison between two or more quantities. The numbers in a ratio are called terms. The ratio of number of liters of pineapple juice to number of kilograms of pineapple can be written as 1 to 3. Wherein 1 is called as our first term and 3 is called as our second term. Ratio can be written in three ways. The first one is by using the word two. Next, the second one is by using a colon. And the third one is by writing it in fraction form. And these are all read as one to three. Let us have our examples. Express is given as ratio in three ways. Let us have three girls and two boys. Let us express it as ratio of girls to boys. Using the word two, it is written as three to two and it's also read as three to two. Using a colon, it is read as three to two and using or writing it in fraction form, it is also read as three to two. Another example, if we get the ratio of four dogs to five cats. So it is written as four to five. In a ratio, let us always remember that the order by which we write the numbers in quantities is important. Let us have our first example a while ago, the three girls and the two boys. If I ask you to write the ratio of girls to boys, it must be written as 3 to 2. While if I ask you to write the ratio of boys to girls, it must be written as 2 to 3. As you can see, the ratio of girls to boys, which is 3 to 2, is different from the ratio of boys to girls, which is 2 to 3. Ratio can also be expressed in simplest form. Let us express the ratio of each pair of roots in simplest form by using a colon and by writing it in fraction form. So let's have first the ratio of pairs to bananas. So as you can see, we have two pairs and four bananas. But according to the direction, we have to express it in simplest form. So what do you think is the simplest form of 2 to 4? Right. Its simplest form in colon is 1 colon 2 or it is read as 1 to 2. In fraction form, it is written as 1 over 2 or it is also read as 1 to 2. Because if we are going to get the common factor or the greatest common factor of 2 and 4, its greatest common factor is 2. So its lowest term is 1 to 2. Next, we have strawberries to apples. How many strawberries do we have? How many apples do we have? So we have 6 strawberries and 3 apples. What is its lowest term? Right, its lowest term is 2 to 1. In fraction form, it is also 2 to 1. For our third example, let's express the ratio of pairs to strawberries in simplest form. How many pairs do we have? So we have 2 pairs and we have 6 strawberries. Expressing it in simplest form, the answer is 1 to 3. How about the ratio of strawberries to bananas? How many strawberries do we have and how many bananas do we have? Exactly, we have 6 strawberries and 4 bananas. What is their lowest term? 
So, their lowest term is 3 to 2. Do you now understand how to express ratio in simplest form? It's the same thing in writing fraction in simplest form. Now, for your activity, you have to express the given ratios in simplest form. To participate in this activity, kindly type in your answer in our comment box below. And you are only given 30 seconds to answer this. And your timer starts now. Time's up. Let us now see the answers. So the answers for books to ball pen is 1 to 2. For ball pens to correction tapes, the answer is 4 to 1. And the answer for books to correction tapes is 2 to 1. Did you get the same answer? Great job. Now, let us have again our example a while ago about pineapples. Let us read and understand the problem. If 3 kilograms of pineapple makes 1 liter of pineapple juice, how many kilograms of pineapple are needed for 5 liters of pineapple juice? So, to answer this problem, let us illustrate it. We know that to produce a liter of pineapple juice, we need... 3 kilograms of pineapple. So let us add another liter of pineapple juice. We have 2 liters. How many kilograms of pineapples do we have now? We have 6 kilograms. If we have another liter of pineapple juice, we have 3 liters of pineapple juice. How many kilograms of pineapple do we have now? We have 9 kilograms. If I add another liter of pineapple juice, which is already 4 liters, how many kilograms of pineapples do we have now? So we have 12 kilograms. And if I add another liter of pineapple juice, how many kilograms of pineapple do we have in all? Right, so for 5 liters of pineapple juice, we have 15 kilograms of pineapple. Again, if we have 1 liter of pineapple juice, we need 3 kilograms of pineapple. And it is written as 1 to 3. If we have 2 liters of pineapple juice, then we need 6 kilograms of pineapple and it is written as 2 to 6. If we have 3 liters of pineapple juice, then we need 9 kilograms of pineapple, which is written as 3 to 9. If we have 4 liters of pineapple juice, then we need 12 kilograms of pineapple, which is written in the ratio of 4 to 12. And if we have 5 liters of pineapple juice, then we need to have 15 kilograms of pineapple, which is written in the ratio of 5 to 15. 1 to 3, 2 to 6, 3 to 9, 4 to 12, 5 to 15 is what we call equal ratios. If we are going to get the simplest form of 2 to 6, 3 to 9, 4 to 12, 5 to 15, it is all equal to 1 to 3. 1 to 3 is equal to 2 to 6. So we can say that 1 to 3 is equal to 2 to 6. 1 to 3 is equal to 3 to 9. 1 to 3 is equal to 4 to 12. 1 to 3 is equal to 5 to 15. 2 to 6 is equal to 3 to 9. 3 to 9 is equal to 4 to 12. And 4 to 12 is equal to 5 to 15. 
this equality of two ratios is what we call proportion. Again, the equality of two or more ratios are what we call proportion. Proportion is composed of two parts. The first part is what we call the means. The means consists of the second term and the third term. While the second part is called the extremes. The extremes consist of the first term and the fourth term. We can say that two ratios form a proportion if the product of the means is equal to the product of the extremes. Let's have an example. You just have to write yes if the given pair of ratios form a proportion and no if it's not. Our first pair of ratios is, is 5 to 10 equal to 4 to 8. To determine if the given pair of ratios is equal, first, we have to multiply the means. Again, our means is the second term and the third term. So let us multiply 10 times 4. 10 times 4 is equal to 40. Next, let us multiply the extremes. We already know that the extremes are the first term and the fourth term. Let us multiply 5 times 8. 5 times 8 is equal to 40. Let us now compare their products. Or let us now compare the products. Is 40 equal to 40? Yes. 40 is equal to 40. Therefore, 5 to 10 is equal to 48. They form a proportion. Next, we have is 1 to 3 equal to 6 to 15. Let us follow the same procedure. The first thing to do is to multiply the means. So our means is the second term and the third term. Our second term is 3 and our third term is 6. 3 times 6 is equal to 18. Next, let us multiply the extremes. Our extremes are the first term and the fourth term. Multiply 1 times 15, so that is equal to 15. Compare the products. Is 18 equal to 15? No, they are not equal. So therefore, 1 to 3 is not equal to 6 to 15. 1 to 3 and 6 to 15 do not form a proportion. Next, let us have our third example. Our third example, as you can see, is in fraction form. We have is 2 to 5 equal to 10 to 12. So let us determine first the means and extremes of these fractions by writing it in column form. So we're in 2 is our first term, 5 is our second term, 10 is our third term, and 12 is our fourth term. We already know that our means are composed of the middle terms, 5 and 10. 5 is our second term and 10 is our third term. Let us now multiply the means. So 5 times 10, that is equal to 50. Now let us multiply the extremes. 2 is our first term and 12 is our fourth term. Multiply the extremes. 2 times 12, we have 24. Compare the products. Is 50 equal to 24? No, 50 is not equal to 24. Therefore, 2 fifths and 10 twelve do not form a proportion. And for our last example, it is also written in fraction form. Let us determine the means and extremes of these fractions by writing it in column form. Where in 3 is our first term, 12 is our second term, 2 is our third term, and 8 is our fourth 
term. Our means here are composed of 12 and 2, where 12 is the second term, and 2 is the third term. Let us now multiply the means. 12 times 2 is equal to 24. Next, let us multiply the extremes. So our first term is 3 and our fourth term is 8. Let us multiply 3 times 8. 3 times 8 is equal to 24. Let us compare the products. Is 24 equal to 24? Yes, 24 is equal to 24. Therefore, 3 to 12 and 2 to 8 form a proportion. For your activity, you just have to type yes or no in our comment box below. Just have to identify if the given pair of ratios form a proportion or not. You're only given one minute to answer this activity. And your timer starts now. up let's see if you get the same answers for number one the answer is no because the product of the means is not equal to the product of the extremes therefore 2 to 8 is not equal to 3 to 4 for number two the answer is yes because the product of the means is equal to the product of the streams Therefore, 3 to 15 is equal to 1 to 5. The third one, the answer is yes. Because the product of the means is equal to the product of the extremes. Therefore, 7 to 4 is equal to 21 to 12. And for our last number, the answer is no. Because the product of the means is not equal to the product of the extremes. Therefore, 6 to 18 is not equal to 4 to 8. Now, let us summarize what you have learned today. So, let us always remember that the ratio is the relationship or comparison of two or more quantities. The numbers in a ratio are called terms. Ratio can be written in three ways, using the word to, using a colon, and by writing it in fraction form. Ratios can also be written in simplest form. Proportion is the equality of two or more ratios, and two ratios are proportion if the product of the means is equal to the product of the extremes. By this time, let us have now our questions and answer portion. If you do have concerns or queries regarding our lesson today, please feel free to type in your questions in our comment box below, and our moderator will assist you. I will try my best to answer your questions as easy as possible. So at this moment, we have a question. One of you asks, are ratio and fraction the same? So the answer is no. Although they are both used to express the quotient of two or more numbers and ratio can be written as fraction, ratio may not represent the same thing as fraction does. A ratio does not always compare things that have the same units, 
but a fraction compare things with the same units. With ratios, the units may or may not be the same. I hope I have explained my answer as clear and easy as your question. And if you don't have any questions, please take note of your home learning task. Your home learning task can be found in your self-learning module. Please answer what's more on page 3, what I can do on page 3 also, and assessment on page 4. Let's call it a day. This ends our discussion. I hope you learned a lot today about ratio and proportion. Again, I am Mrs. Marifi C. Bilanghel saying, do not be afraid if we commit mistakes, especially when we are solving problems. Just always remember the word math. Mistakes allow thinking to happen. See you again in our next discussion. Goodbye!